Hello and welcome to Cash and Crises, a series of financial literacy audiographics brought to you by Cash Essentials, a private sector initiative with a social mission to support the relief and development community in understanding some lesser known aspects of how cash is managed for society in times of crisis. Today, we'll be taking a look at prepaid card payments and settlements. As always, let's start with a short reality check. The beginning of the Syria crisis, relief agencies in Jordan and Lebanon paid between 2.5 and 5% of the total sum transmitted in transaction fees for their card-based cash and vulture assistance programs. By 2017, collective negotiation had reduced this figure to 1.67%. But while recognizing that the cost of cards are typically higher than cash for small retail transactions, what does this 1.67% represent? And how much of it covers the actual costs incurred? To answer these questions, we need to look at who is involved, what processes are required, and uncover long-held industry secrets of how much each step normally costs in the commercial world. Payments and settlements involve three cost areas. Some of these costs are direct and others indirect. Some are fixed and others variable. The demand side, which covers transaction costs downstream from point of sale. The supply side, which covers upstream costs of the card payments infrastructure and economic cost. The back-end costs of foreign exchange, data protection, regulatory compliance and operational management. When a customer, or recipient in aid terms, uses a prepaid card to obtain cash from an ATM or pay for goods at a store, four main parties are involved. The merchant, or ATM, the merchant's bank, the acquiring bank, or ATM owner, the recipient, and the aid agency's bank, the issuing bank. To make the system work, the acquiring bank and the issuing bank have a licensing agreement with the card scheme function of companies such as Visa, MasterCard and UnionPay. In addition, they have a processing agreement with the switch function of these companies. With additional actors included in the settlement process, as many as 15 fee payments, sometimes even more, are made between all those involved in the transaction. These fees cover the actual costs of payment processing plus a margin for profit. These charges don't include the cost of program support, foreign exchange, card production and distribution, data protection, regulatory compliance, insurance or fraud prevention and dispute resolution. Nor do they take into account other externalities, such as the time and place it takes to access cash in the first place. When looking at costs, let's first look at the demand side in a bit more detail. First is the merchant services charge, sometimes called the merchant discount fee. For each card transaction, the merchant pays a fee to its bank. This bank transfers the sales price into the merchant's account after deducting this charge, the bulk of which is made up of interchange, card scheme fees, clearing and settlement fees, and their own operational costs. In normal consumer transactions, this charge is passed on to the customer in the form of higher prices. The merchant services charge is typically between $1.65 and $2.24, though it can be higher. Interchange. Interchange refers to the fee charged by the issuing bank to the acquiring bank to cover their part in the clearing and settlement process. This fee is set by the card networks, not the banks, and depending on the scale of the program is usually non-negotiable in humanitarian situations. Long an industry secret, these fees have begun to be regulated with the result that interchange fees have recently been slashed in some jurisdictions. This follows revelations in the US that card schemes have been charging retailers excessive fees for a long time. Switch. The payment switch is a separate entity that facilitates communication between various banks to process payments, authorizations, clearing and settlement. It understands which providers it needs to process with, formats the message for that provider, sends it to them, gets a response, changes the response to a generic format, and sends the response back to the originator. Although this switch is a separate entity in the majority of cases, this function is performed by the card companies. Card scheme or network fees. A typical card scheme usually retains a fee of about 11 cents to cover costs of the card scheme licensing function. These include the costs of compliance, scheme integrity, marketing, and other operating expenses. Authentication. 
if using a PIN for authentication, an additional fee of between 3 and 8 cents may be added, depending on the segment and channel. In Jordan, IrisGuard's fee for use of their Iris scanning technology is 15% of the total transaction cost, i.e. about 22 cents. ATM fees. If using an ATM operated by someone other than the issuing bank, a surcharge might be added depending on whether or not the same back-end processing system is being used. These fees are typically about $3, but can sometimes be much higher. Gateway fees. A payment gateway is a third-party e-commerce service, such as Venmo, that facilitates a transaction between a payment portal, such as a website or mobile money application, and the acquiring bank. Typically, such a service charges $0.05 cents per transaction. And on the supply side, card production. According to commercial sources, each personalized chip and pin card costs about $2 to make and can be delivered to the client at a rate of up to 10,000 per day. In the Lebanon One Card Pilot in 2015, card issuance and replacement was charged at between $3.25 and $5 per card. Activation and loading. Activation and pin issuance fees levied by commercial providers typically cost between $3.95 per card with additional loading fees charged at around $2.35 for each monthly upload. Account management. In protracted crisis situations, it is likely that financial services providers levy a monthly maintenance account management fee per card issued on top of the fees already mentioned. These vary depending on the caseload, but are usually around 30 cents per month per card, where more than 100,000 cards are issued. In total, the US Federal Reserve estimates that the actual processing cost per debit card transaction amounts to 15 cents, which includes the cost of authorization, clearance, and settlement. The comparable figure for Europe is 70 cents, but recent regulation is likely to see this sum reduce. Then there are the less obvious economic costs to consider, all of which are a direct or indirect part of the payment cycle. Foreign exchange. Incoming funds from donor to agency incur foreign exchange fees, which have to be converted, sometimes via US dollars, to the local currency. These costs can be considerable and are part of the hidden cost of treasury management within the cash cycle. In Yemen in 2017, these Forex fees amounted to an excessive $40 million. Infrastructure. Much of the cost effectiveness of cash and voucher assistance programming depends on whether or not a robust payments infrastructure already exists. A typical handheld point of sale device costs approximately $600 and depends on internet connectivity. Regulatory compliance. By law, financial service providers are obliged to conduct Know Your Customers, KYC, due diligence on each potential customer. Additional legal measures covering anti-terror, anti-money laundering and data protection have also been introduced recently. In crisis situations, at least some of this process is carried out by the aid agency partner thus saving the service provider the cost of doing so. The overall cost for commercial KYC processing ranges from $15 to $130 per background check and takes an average of 48 days. Interest. Prepaid cards are favored by aid agencies as they have the advantage of not needing a bank account and the beneficiary cannot overspend. The disadvantages are that interest on the initial deposit and on card balances accrues to the issuing bank, not the donor or recipient. Customer Acquisition Cash and voucher assistance programs deliver new customers to the issuing bank effectively for free, thus saving them one of their biggest business costs, the cost of customer acquisition and retention. This ranges from $1,500 per customer for a large US or European bank to about $250 for a smaller bank in a lower income country. Incentives and rebates. Card schemes also provide rebates and incentives to some of their larger customers, the issuing and acquiring banks, depending on such things as business volumes and contract renewal rates. In summary, one, card payment fees are negotiable. 
even interchange is negotiable in certain humanitarian circumstances and where volumes are high. 2. The actual direct cost of a single prepaid card transaction in a commercial setting amounts to about 43 cents. 3. There appears to be scope for aid agencies to negotiate further reductions in demand and supply side costs. And 4. Humanitarian financial assistance programs offer considerable opportunity cost savings, especially in the area of customer acquisition and retention. We hope you find these insights useful when considering which cash modality to choose in times of crisis. If you want to know more on this or other related topics covered in our audiographic series, please have a look on our website at www.cashessentials.org. Until next time, goodbye.